I'll never forget this one time I had a friend of a friend get into a kind of debate with me about if technocrats can make humanity better with their technologies, why shouldn't they? Which, as you can imagine, turned into a 30 minute long debate that had to be broken up by other people in her group. But I think my biggest point that couldn't be refuted was why would anyone just automatically trust and believe that technocrats know how to, quote, make humanity better? Why would we just automatically assume that? That's a big, that's a big assumption. (laughs) All of these technologies are acting upon us psychologically. That's the bottom line. I tried to learn French on Duolingo and... Pretty quickly, I realized that this app works via manipulation, and it really killed it for me. It's a bummer, because the games themselves were actually helping me to learn and retain French. But it was the blatant and obvious gaslighting and passive aggressiveness that the company admittedly uses, by the way, passive aggressiveness, to try and keep people doing their lessons. Slowly and systematically being driven out of your mind. Why? Why? If you don't do a lesson, it will send you a notification that Duo thinks you're avoiding him. Or it'll say, you let Duo down. Or it'll send you an email, you made Duo sad. Or it'll say, go on, keep scrolling on social media. Let's see how much French that can teach you. It's like it's constantly screwing with you. Duo himself will show up any time you might be in danger of breaking your streak to give you a subtle reminder. I mean, so sure, people might be learning second and third languages. That's that's awesome for humanity, right? That's overall probably a good thing. But the app itself is also training people to respond to psychological manipulation the same way that Marty McFly in Back to the Future can't let it go if someone calls him a chicken. It's that same mechanism. What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? Are you chicken? Chicken? Chicken. And the CEO of Duolingo has openly and proudly admitted this. There are headlines. Disappointed duo. Passive aggressive duo. Like, here you go. Here's one right here. I am the CEO of Duolingo. And if our passive aggressive push notifications don't make you learn French, I don't know what will. A subtle dig to your psyche that makes you feel like you're spiting us by completing a lesson. Nobody calls me chicken. I mean, that's the mechanism they're using to get people to learn these languages. Not now, Duo. Okay. I'm doing it. I mean, this is something that people go to years of therapy to undo the damage from, right? Growing up under a passive-aggressive parent and how that screws with you. And now that same psychological mechanism has been weaponized so people can learn French. I mean, how is that ultimately making humanity better and not just making people more psychologically controllable? So this is what I have to do in order to continue. If I want to continue using that app, I have to know, ah, this mechanism is being deployed on me every time I go to try to learn French, that they're going to be doing that to me. And I just feel like as... The years are going by with this technology being more and more ingrained in our lives. You can sense and feel the manipulation everywhere. It just gets more and more intense all the time. And we have all this commentary right now about how we seem more divided than ever in society. And I don't think that would be complete without acknowledging the ways in which the algorithms are literally driving people into different versions of reality. This is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I think the the free speech debate is a complete distraction right now. I think the real debate should be about about free will. And we we feel it right now because we are being programmed. Which brings me to the topic of today's video. Watch this clip. This is the most insane example of how everyone is experiencing completely different social medias at the exact same time. Like this video, my boyfriend said he'd be over by three after golfing. And like, it's just her every half an hour taking a video saying, oh, he's still not here. And it gets to like five or 6 p.m. and he's still not here. I opened the comments of this video and kind of as I expected, everyone was saying, oh, that's really rude. It's the disregard of her time. I don't like him. Um, Did he communicate with you? If not, then that's a red flag. Okay. I send this video to my boyfriend who was sat next to me 
And then I said to my boyfriend, lol, look at the comments. Bear in mind, these comments were coming up at the top of the list. So like, as soon as you open the comments, these are the ones that came up for me. Tell me fucking why my boyfriend opens the comments on his phone. The, again, it's the first list of comments that come up. It's the same time on the same video. Or you could get your own hobby instead of waiting around for him. Like, God forbid he has a good time. He meant before 3am, he's ahead of schedule. No fucking wonder we're all so divided when you can look at the same comments on the same video and it'll change them based on who you are and I presume based on like other activity in the app. Now you might say, no way, there's no way, that's not happening, but you can easily go test this out for yourself. You just need to find somebody who's willing to let you look at their feed. If you find somebody that that's mostly the same, you know, political stripes and everything, it might not be as obvious. I sent a few random Instagram posts to my friend. I had her look at the comments on a post and screen capture those on her phone and then on her husband's phone who doesn't really use Instagram just to see what the responses would be on a post that, you know, would be sort of divisive. Just to see, right? And they're totally different. He is being fed a different view of the digital landscape than what is being shown to her. So it's as if the algorithms themselves are feeding people into different worlds. This would be like if you went outside and found that somebody organized the entire world you saw in a way that when your significant other or your mother or your father or your siblings or friends or whoever else went outside, saw something totally different from you. But meanwhile, you both have to exist in the same environment. Right? You're busy arguing there's a rabid dog on the front lawn. And when they open the door, they're like, oh, it's a cute little puppy with bow ties in a basket. I love it. I'm going to go snuggle and nuzzle it up to my face. And you're like, no, it's going to eat your face off and give you rabies. And they're just looking at you like you're insane. Right? These comments are not being organized in any kind of chronological order, or the order in which they were posted, or what's most recently been posted, or even digital merit, which is totally problematic, and I'll get to that in a minute, but it's not as if the most liked or most viewed comment is at the top, and then the comments are organized in that way. No, these comments are being algorithmically organized in a way that is specifically based on who is looking at them for reasons that are not explained. We're being programmed based on what we say we're interested in, and we are told uh, through these discovery mechanisms what is interesting. And as we engage and interact with this content, the algorithm continues to build more and more of this bias. But the algorithm, even if it's open source, is effectively a black box. You cannot predict 100% uh, of the time how it's going to work, what it's going to show you. But when you start doing some experiments with it, it's not that hard to guess because you can see the clashing of opposites everywhere. So if we're looking at it from two completely different angles and the only thing that I can assume really that's that different about our interactions with Instagram is that he's a guy and I'm a girl and so obviously these are all like on his side and all of mine were on her side what it's like that plot that happens sometimes in movies and tv shows where a character is put into a false reality and they have to wake up from it that's what these comments are doing because people look at the fucking comments of a video to gain perspective and see how everyone feels about that video. Like, I do that. I think everyone does that. And we've been trained by this technology to give weight to these comments as a form of reality validation. I mean, I recently stayed in an Airbnb. And the lady's house that I was staying in, she wasn't there because she was actually out of the country in Greece on vacation. And she said she normally wouldn't let anybody stay in her house, but she read my feedback. She read the comments about me. And the comments about me were all very positive about how I take good care of properties and I leave places as good as they were when I got there and stuff like that. So then she let me stay there despite the fact that it's her home and I'm a complete stranger and her cat is there. You know, I could be a psycho, who knows, right? But the comments had so much weight about me that therefore she went ahead and let me stay in her house. And her cat loved me, by the way. It's a very cute cat. But that's how much we've been trained to put weight on these comments. How much we've been trained to respect and to use comments to make decisions that affect our lives. 
And so it goes beyond just, you know, reading the comments before you buy something online or reading the comments about a, a business, the services that a business is going to provide. I mean, there have been whole lawsuits about Yelp because of negative Yelp reviews being that important to a business. So people have been sued over leaving fake negative reviews because of how detrimental that can be. That's how important reviews are. So we've been trained by this technology to use these comments to inform decisions we make about our lives. What we do and what we say and how we react and how we perceive what's going on in the world. You might think that's not a big deal, but when you look around at the divisiveness that's happening in society, it's a huge deal. There's been plenty of studies that have been done on how we are affected by comments. And a quick search will give you whatever you want to see in that regard. But every single one that I saw came back with, yes, the comments affect how we view what we're reading every time. I, never, I didn't see a single study out there. I couldn't find a single one. It would be easier for you to just go try to find a single study anywhere that says reading comments doesn't affect people, doesn't affect their view overall. I haven't seen that. Just randomly, this one popped up in my search results. It was a 2017 study from the Journal of Contingencies and Crisis Management on whether comments change people's opinions, which found a statistically significant difference between people who just read the news story versus people who read the news story and the comments about that news story. And in this particular example, they found that people who read a story about a crisis at a company and then went on to read comments from other people defending that company they themselves would then attribute less responsibility to the company for said crisis because that's what they saw everyone else doing and they took their cues from everyone else. The study also showed that comments with more likes were deemed more credible by readers, which, as I was about to say earlier, is very problematic because we know that comments can be left by bots. We know that uh, likes can be paid for they can be bot farmed. So all of these things can be manipulated, all of them. And that's not even to say that on the back end of websites, people can just manipulate that stuff anyway, because they can. They can manipulate views, view counts, likes, all of it can be manipulated on the back end of these sites. But people are just ultimately very trusting of what they see. Even in a time period right now where we're consistently being shown in thousands of different ways and myriad ways that we should be questioning everything. That is just the position we should start with. But that's kind of, that's exhausting, right? That's very tiresome to have to question everything. So it's easier to just accept things as if they are reality, despite the fact that all of this is a very easily manipulated version of reality. But we don't even need scientific studies to tell us that feedback affects and shapes our perceptions of reality. I mean, we grow up as children looking especially to the adults around us to learn how to react and respond to reality. I mean, that's just how being alive as social creatures works. But the action of these algorithms organizing comments in this way is another form of technology tearing us apart from each other. It's another way our, our empathy our ability to see the world from other and especially opposing perspectives from our own is being systematically destroyed as they're building up this false reality around us through these comments. I mean, you could have two people sitting on the same couch in physical reality with each other watching the same YouTube video or reading the same Twitter post or watching the same TikTok or Instagram clips. And depending on what is probably a ridiculous number of data points that have been collected on each person, what comments they're being shown responding to that, shaping their view of that material, could give each of them an entirely different impression of, about the reality they're in on lines of thinking that are already dividing us from each other, especially including all this identity politics, which we know has been whipped up specifically following Occupy Wall Street and other protest movements where you had large majorities of everyone going against a very small number of elite people at the top. That is when all this identity politics really started coming to the fore. And I don't think that's a coincidence. So essentially, it's like we've all been put in our own little matrix pods with these algorithmically generated visions of reality. 
That's why you can go to a family dinner and get into an argument with someone of a different political stripe, and it doesn't take long to feel like you're literally arguing with an alien from another planet who doesn't speak your language. And I know people criticize me on this channel for using the Matrix as a metaphor way too often, but come on, that's exactly what this is. People keep wondering, how did the world get so divided? They are literally dividing us into different versions of reality with this technology just using the comments. That's how easy it is to do. That's before you even get to bot farms and all that other stuff about whether or not the comments are even real to begin with or like really made by an actual person somewhere or not a robot or, or whatever, right? If it's actual humans in the first place. Reality at this point is just so, it's so easily manipulated. And this is just one way in which it's being done, but it's a pretty fundamental way. And so the levels of divide and conquer are just diabolical at this point. I mean, they really, truly are in ways that the average person doesn't even realize is happening to them and everyone they know every single day. And so what we need now is more understanding on how this technology is working on us to break that freaking spell. Realizing this is how the comments work at least takes a little of that power over our perceptions down a notch, right? It doesn't necessarily matter which party is actually in the right. What matters is the fact that people are being fed completely different takes on media. Because they keep telling us we're going to live in this world where the algorithms know us better than we know ourselves. And the only way to combat that, really, is to get to know what these algorithms are doing to us. I think the real debate should be about, about free will. And we, we feel it right now because we are being programmed. We're being programmed based on what we say we're interested in. And we are told uh, through these discovery mechanisms what is interesting. And as we engage and interact with this content, the algorithm continues to build more and more of this bias. But the algorithm, even if it's open source, is effectively a black box. You cannot predict 100% uh, of the time how it's going to work, what it's going to show you. And it can be moved and changed at any time. And, be, and because people become so dependent upon it, it's actually changing and impacting the, the agency we have, the free agency we have. And I think the only answer to this is not to work harder at open source in algorithms, or making them more explainable about what they're doing and why they're doing it, but to give people choice. Give people choice of what algorithm they want to use from a party that they trust. Give people choice to build their own algorithm that they can plug in on top of these networks and, um, and see, you know, see what they want and they can shift them out as well. Um, and give people choice to have really a marketplace around an algorithm that you can choose. Then again, how would I know? I'm trapped in the same digital bubble with everyone else. I mean, when I am put up a video on here, for example, all of the data around it gets messed with. And there are dozens of accounts that are leaving what is verbatim the same comments over and over and have nothing to do with the actual video content itself. Or on Twitter, Zitter, X Twitter, whatever you want to call that, there are dozens upon dozens of accounts I have recently figured out that are actually all coming from the same place. They aren't different accounts. It's the either the same person or a bot farm or something, AI, whatever the hell that is. But it's, it's not different people. It's all one entity. So how would I know? I'm in the same digital bubble as everyone else. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.